Thank you. Um, where are we, do you think, in terms of a kind of world order? We have gone through, the, in the 89 and 90, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Then we had uh, the United States engaged in the Middle East uh, in a long war that continues. Then we had the global economic crisis. So many people say, what is going to come out of this? Well, I see the uh, imbroglio in Iraq and Afghanistan as distractions. It's not going to change the world, whatever happens to Iraq or Afghanistan, because the major changes that are taking place is the recovery of China and to a, uh, to a lesser extent of India, the places they occupied two centuries or three and a half, three centuries ago before Western colonization blanketed them. Uh, three centuries ago, they were, between the two of them, 60% of the world GDP, just the population and the uh, pr uh, production that they put out. Uh, China is again on the growth path. She's now a member of WTO. She knows that every year she's growing faster than anybody else and can do that for another 20, 30 years because it's, it's a watershed. I mean, the world order that we knew was dominated by the Caucasian peoples, Europe, uh, technology, sailing ships and aircraft, they conquered the world, uh, industrialization. Globalization. Globalization. Well, industrialization first, first and then they globalize yeah. it. And America is, is the extension of Europe with a difference in that she's more embracing of other races. The 20th century was the American century. The first half of the 21st century, a large part of it will still be the American. But I believe the second half, you will have to share top places with China, and also with India, make space for them too. When you look at the U.S. and its relationship and its concern about oil and its politics in the Middle East, yeah. you think it's a distraction? You think that it... No, I'm not saying the Middle East is... So therefore you do what? I'm not an expert, but in my simple mind, it strikes me that you yeah. won in Iraq, uh, you won in Afghanistan, not because you fought the Taliban, but because you got the Northern Alliance to fight them. Exactly. And you provided the Northern Alliance with intelligence and the capabilities to bomb them and target them. And they captured the South. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they've got governance problems over there too. Yeah, that's all right, but that's their problem. Why do you want to make it your problem? So what would you do? Would you pull all the troops out and let whatever happens to Afghanistan happens to Afghanistan? It's not that threatening to the United States. Is that the argument? I don't know about that because I think it cannot be more difficult to, for the United States and to have your troops stuck there. The, the Russians are a brutal, ruthless so a lot of army people, right. 120,000 of them were there. But they had to leave. Yeah, and we helped that because we supported the Mujahideen. Yeah. The Mujahideen had a lot of support from around the world who yeah. wanted to see the Soviet Union take it. Yeah, but whether or not the Soviets helped them to get the Americans right. out, <laughs> I yeah. think the Americans and the NATO troops, the NATO members are very skeptical of the outcome even to the point of not wanting to send their troops in certain kinds of combat areas. Quite right. Yeah. Yes, of course, because you get shot for nothing. But those who argue that it, if Afghanistan is abandoned, first of all, the world will say, or people will say, look, you left Afghanistan once before after the Soviets had left, and now you're leaving again. The United States has to stand for something, and it has to show that it's prepared to stay. Yeah, no. You don't buy that at all. 
Yeah. You know, Rudyard, you, I mean, you must have a wonderful conversation with your friend Henry Kissinger then. No, no. No, oh, stop no. there, though. Where do you and Henry Kissinger differ on, an, uh, on a look, a view of the U.S. role in the world? I don't think we change, we are, there's any difference. Is there. that right? How would you define it then? I think the U.S. can be a benign stabilizer of the world order. A benign stabilizer? Yes. Without the U.S., East Asia would never have grown. You and brought peace and technology, trade and investments, and East Asia flourished. That's well, that's clear. It's happened in East Asia. Yeah, you talk about Singapore and North and South yeah, Korea. No, and absolutely. So, and if you're so not we there, how do we do that in the Middle East? How do we do that when you've got the kind of conflict that's taking place? Uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> You can't solve all the problems in the world. Ah. Some problems just got to be resolved by the And so what are your priorities? For Singapore? No, for the United States. What no, should I, be the priorities? I, I cannot think. Yes. I'm not an American. I do not uh, calculate in American terms. I calculate what Americans are likely to do in relation to what will happen to me. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why they listen to you. That's why you're going to see Mr. Bernanke tomorrow, and that's why you're going to see Larry Summers, and that's why you're going to see all these American officials. They want to know how you assess the way the world is working today. And your central message is you got to engage. LKY, or Lee Kuan Yew in short, is LKY. You know, he would have, he, his advice and his talk and all that was centered around that the U.S. Uh, should withdraw from Afghanistan earlier. And... Uh, if the people had listened to his advice, nobody would have invaded Iraq, leaving Saddam Hussein to contain the rest of the monkeys around the region would have been a better idea. Iran would have put a been state in place because Iraq is always a counter. You see, in nature, you don't go to sea and kill out the sharks. The top rated tech you never take out. You will take out and ups that upsets the, the situation. So the lesson that you learn is, if you don't need something, don't expect somebody else to come and fight it for you. You understand? If the Afghanis can't handle it, you don't expect the, the Americans to come and give up their lives and the American troops to, uh, to you know, cover you. Not going to happen. It should have been done a long, long time ago. And that's a lesson that you folks need to learn in Karapura too. If you don't need, if you don't cough up the courage to kick these monkeys out, Koti Karan out, nobody else is going to come and do that for you. Hope you heard a lesson, uh, two lessons there. One, about you in Karapura. And second, take a lesson from the world order. Take a lesson from Afghanistan. Take a lesson from history.